Mr. Eby and Casserole is dumb. scooby doo bop 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 I'm so sorry, babe. I just, I, I hadn't tasted him yet. I'm and sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Looking forward to, right. you right. know. Like, Don't talk about the ingredients. I know. Yeah. After, it's just a surprise for your mouth. Yeah. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time for another comic book review. This week we're reviewing Devil's Raid number one from one of my favorite writers, Chip Zdarsky, with one of my absolute favorite artists, Marco Cicchetto. I've really enjoyed Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil run well, until maybe the last, I think the last really good episode or issue of Daredevil was that King and Black tie-in. Remember when uh, when Matt Murdock had the symbiote on him and is essentially exercised, ex, is it exercised? I think it's exercised himself. You know, by electrocuting himself and and uh, freed himself from the symbiote. I thought that was a really good issue. There hasn't really been a great one after that. It's, a lot of it's been of the Matt Murdock story where he's been in prison. In the last issue, he did get out, but I'm going to be honest. Daredevil 36 blew chunks. It was so bad. The art was terrible, and the story was um, nondescript at best. And I got to be honest, as far as Devil's Reign number one, there are some very positive aspects of this comic book. But there are some very negative aspects of this comic book. I am going to recommend it because I think if you leave your mind at the door and don't think about what you're actually reading, you can probably enjoy this comic book. But if you do think about it, it might ruin it just because of the uh, a lot of the stupidity that, that's, a sto that, that's associated with this. The motivation for the Powers Act that's revealed in here and hinted at it in the very final pages of uh, Daredevil 36 are less than compelling. There is a plan to thwart the kingpin by the eight, by the end with Tony Stark, which is absolutely lame. Hey, <laughs> there's been some lame lame uh, ideas in comic books, and this one's about as vanilla. Actually, it's not vanilla. It's it's just like it's Greek yogurt. You know what I mean? It's like, ugh, why the fuck would I want to eat that by itself? You just throw something in there and make it taste like that. You know what I mean? So the the reveal of what the plan to defeat. Wilson Fisk is just stupid, but the art in this shockingly is badass. It is like, it is really good. When I show you these pages, I'm going to show you some, a couple of, a couple of extras just to key in on the art and what makes Marco Cicchetto such a fantastic comic artist in my mind. I think you guys are going to love it. And when the characters finally get to be in action and do superhero stuff, when they're fighting the powers act, it's good. So, You've got these cool elements. The art's fantastic. When the character's going to do his superhero stuff, it works. But everything surrounding it is a cocoon of lameness. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain it. You know what's crazy about this? Is they've had all this time since the end of King and Black until this to really set this damn thing up. They really could have done something special here. And I'll get into my, my ideas of how this could have been done better. But they've done nothing. It's been Matt Murdock sitting on his ass in prison being boring as shit while Elektra's out there going and, and being a fucking superhero. And that's one of the reasons that, that Daredevil sucks so bad. That and we haven't really seen Marco Chichetto on art very much. So I think it's a missed opportunity on, on Zdarsky's part and just setting this up. There's some definite similarities between this and the failings of the recent Fear State event in Batman, which I will definitely tie, uh, touch on. But... If you don't think about it and, and you ignore some of the stupidness, there's a lot of fun to be had in this comic book. Huh? How's was that one? I'm, I'm cynical and optimistic at the same time. And that's absolutely how I feel about this comic. So let's get into the details of Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto's Devil's Raid number one. We will start out with the art. This is not even close. This is the best part of the comic book. Marco Cicchetto should be a superstar. The unfortunate part is once Marvel actually realized that he is a superstar, he will never be allowed to do more than two issues in a row. It will always be a number one and a number two issue so they can bait and switch you right out of a fucking title. And then he'll just do comic book covers for the rest of his career at Marvel Comics until uh, hopefully he moves on. But for now, he's still allowed to do interior art. He's still allowed to do them sequentially and do full story arts. I imagine, I don't imagine, he's going to be on this entire uh, Devil's Reign event. And just look at this page. Look at Captain America throwing that shield through the panels, 
breaking that dude's uh dude's face off. That's pretty badass. I must say that new Spider-Man costume behind him absolutely sucks. Balls. That is not a Marco Cicchetto problem. Uh, we've also got Spider-Man in action here. Marco Cicchetto on a Spider-Man book would be absolutely bonkers. He's such a he's. We don't get to see him do the character often, but every time he does the character, it is absolutely sublime. I love it when he does Spider-Man. He always puts him in the best poses. He's got a very physical presence about him, which I really like. Obviously, in the background, you can't see Matt Murdock, Daredevil, as well as Electra Daredevil. They're doing all kinds of Daredevil stuff, and this just looks fantastic. It looks like they are in a city burning down where chaos is happening, and they're fighting against the man. Great use of uh, negative space, not clouding up the background with too much detail as we have these wonderful superhero acts happening right in front of us to take our eye off the prize and the prize in this one is absolutely captain america slinging that shield through panels knocking that dude's block off and then spider-man webbing this asshole up so this stuff is great there's another one i'm gonna hit on the art again because i love this once i saw this i was like i'm talking about this you know what would get me not half cocked but fully cocked and ready for a fucking Marvel comic book is Mar uh, Marco Cicchetto on a damn thing team up book with Spider Man or a Marvel two in one or even Fantastic Four. Look at his thing, especially that bottom panel with that wonderful shadow cloaking his face. Tell me that is not a great rendering of Ben Grimm. That is just fantastic. And I love the incorporation, obviously, of the sound effects. I imagine that was the letter and not Marco Chet himself, but absolutely fits right in there. He's just, um, the dude is a master at his craft. And I think if Marvel Comics would allow it, he would really be a superstar in comic books. Unfortunately, I, I do believe there's a bit of a language barrier. I believe he's, you know, I think he's Italian. But the... The pages and the artwork speaks for itself. This guy should be headlining major, major books. I don't feel like Devil's Reign is a major book because it's coming out of the pages of, of uh, Daredevil. And unfortunately, that was criminally underread. Even, you know, uh, even uh, it hasn't been great lately, but when it was great, it was still underread, unfortunately. Although it was able, it has been able to maintain its reading audience better than a lot of titles. I think it's because people have uh, appreciated keeping the, the two main creators, Zdarsky and Shichetto, together for at least a, a somewhat a semblance of a long period of time. Now, Shichetto hasn't done all the, the story arcs. He does kind of every other one. But when he's on it, it's just it's next level stuff. And it's the best looking comic book, really, that you're going to find at, DC, or at Marvel Comics. Man, look at that thing. I want him to be illustrating a thing book that looks so good. All right, let's get into the story and some of the failings and some of the things that really work for this besides the art. Now, the biggest failing is it the biggest failing. It's it's the motivation for this event and the lead up to it is really where the, where the ball has been dropped. It kind of comes out of nowhere at the very end of Daredevil thirty six. Wilson Fisk, Wilson Fisk marries Typhoid Mary, which that really came out of nowhere. It's like why in the hell? These, these two are a thing. Oh, they love each other. Apparently, they're going to get married. And at the end, he goes to, like, his summer house to enjoy his honeymoon. And he's going through his personal vault. And he is, there's a folder that says Daredevil's identity. And that's the big cliffhanger. But we find out that in that folder, there's nothing. It's completely void. There's no, uh, no way to identify who Daredevil is. And Wilson Fisk believes that his mind has been messed with. Somebody has removed this information, and he thinks Daredevil's one of the reasons that it happened. Now, we do know this is this is the case. It was, uh, I don't know, that purple guy, whatever. This is such a lame-ass reason to enact the Powers Act. Spite? The, the mayor can't just outlaw stuff like this. you, you got to do legislation. There needed to be an event that facilitated people churning on superheroes and going along with this. Now, there was an event, as I mentioned earlier, it was called King in Black. There could have been a portion of that story arc if Marvel Comics were smart and actually their, their creators were allowed to work together, and they could have seamlessly tied these two things in together, even though they were months apart. They could have had Wilson Fisk be a major, major player 
within the King of Black story, ended up working with the superheroes, but along the way he had to find out some of the truths about this symbiote army, where they came from, and allow him, after they won, to turn the tables on the superheroes and say, checkmate, now that I know this, I'm going to tell the world that Spider-Man is the reason that all this happened, and I'm going to turn public sentiment around on Spider-Man. Matt Murdock could have been out of prison, you know, because he helped save the day and could have been trying to thwart him. But Kingpin, along maybe with some, with some, other, some other smart villain, could have been one step ahead of him and got the drop on him. And, and we got into this Devil's Reign event. And that would have made sense because, you know, hey, New York City almost died because of there. But there's been so many months in here. He had nothing to do with that. He barely mentions it in here. And you, you find out the reason he's doing this and enacting the Powers Act. Oh, I think that you did something to my mind. You took information. It's so lame. It doesn't make any sense within the, the scope of the universe. Yes, that is a motivation that would, I guess, work, Wilson Fisk, if you really wanted a lame-ass, boring motivation. But it still doesn't make sense. He wouldn't be able to, to enact an army you know, on the on the state's dime or the city's dime and, and start enacting these laws. You, you need public trust. And another thing that comes up time and time again, and I'm going to get into that, why it doesn't make sense in here, is that Wilson Fisk needs to be reelected as the mayor of New York. If you want to be reelected as the mayor of New York, you don't take out all the heroes in one fell swoop. Like, get out of here. He's not that stupid. But and here's another thing. We just jump right into this son of a bitch with no precursor, even though Zdarsky had months since the end of King and Black to set this thing up to where uh, Fisk was putting his army together. Maybe the heroes knew about it. They tried to thwart him, and it just didn't work out, and they got played in the end, and they lost. And we got the new Thunderbolts here. You know, hey, they look great. It looks cool. And when they're doing Thunderbolt stuff and they're hitting people and, and stuff, and when Rhino knocks the piss out of somebody, it's great. When the hell did you put this team together? Why are the, the, the people in the Marvel 616 even allowing this to happen? It's, he did, he's doing the same exact thing that fucking ruined James Tynan's two uh, Gotham City events, Joker War and, and Fear State. They forgot, you know, where's the fucking foreplay, man? How am I supposed to get my dick hard on this thing if you just jump right into this thing? I'm supposed to be, you're supposed to be working me up to this. And you just get right into the main event. Get out of here. I'm not that easy. You know, I think about these things. He had all this time to get you ready for this event and how the Thunderbolts got together and how he was able to make this dramatic speech that should have been the final pages of of Daredevil 336, if I'm being honest, and the culmination of them being outwitted and outfoxed by Wilson Fisk. <clears throat> and a lot of these pages, when they start arresting all the heroes, should have been the final pages of the last issue of all of those comics as well. And that would have been a real cool, you know, galvanizing event where everybody would have been rock hard for this damn thing and ready to get into it. But it just happens. You know, guess who they're trying to, to arrest in here? Tony Stark. How the hell is he here? This isn't one of those, well, we're, we're, it's comic books, so, you know, we don't know exactly what the time is. He's in he's in the Rocky Mountains. He, he could be back in time. No, he's not. He's on the other side of the fucking galaxy. There's supposed to be continuity. The continuity is what makes this, the universe special and fun and, and gets you ready and invested in these events, and it's just completely missing. It's, it's lacking. And that part sucks, in my opinion. I think the motivation and the lead-up is are all missed opportunities to do something really cool the kingpin is supposed to be one of the scariest characters in the dc universe not only is he a physical presence but he's fucking psycho like this is girlfriend psycho not henchman psycho in my opinion now let's get into the good stuff and i already mentioned the art and i showed you a picture of when we got spider-man we got captain america well, we got the two daredevils all in action. And it looks great, and when they're doing superhero stuff, it looks it looks so so much fun. Another thing I absolutely love about this comic book: we never get to see Luke Cage, and Luke Cage is a hundred percent badass in this comic book. I fucking love it. We need more Luke Cage. You know what happens when you threaten Luke Cage's wife and his child? He fucking annihilates the Shocker and treats him like a little punk. It was great. He's just breaking the shock, shockers on his, his gauntlets on his hands. 
beating the piss out of him. He's throwing people around. It's awesome. This is why Luke Cage is such a great character. Why are they so, why are they mistreating Power Man? Ugh, so many missed opportunities, but he looks great. If you want to see Luke Cage in action, kicking ass and taking names, Devil's Raid is going to give you quite a few pages of that action. And I absolutely loved it. Drink it all in. That's what I say. Drink it all in because you'd never know when Luke Cage is going to get us to something absolutely badass in the near future. Because it feels like Marvel Comics has absolutely forgotten about it. And if you like Jessica Jones, she does some badass stuff too. And she's not even drinking and banging everybody. So it's like a better version of Jessica Jones if you if you rewatch the Netflix universe. So there are there are definitely some things that absolutely work. When the superheroes get to do superhero stuff and they get to fight against this uh this army and the thunderbolts that what Will Sk Fisk could put together, it's great. It's just all the stuff around it that does not work for me. Ah, oh, Power Man, Luke Cage. Why have you done this to him, Marvel Comics? He should be such a big deal. This is his 50th year, or at least we're coming up on it. Yeah, we'll be there in a month. Ah, that looks great. Have you noticed that every fucking character that Marco Cicchetto illustrates in this comic book, comic book looks like better than their own series? Especially, you know who looks the best? I didn't even show him in here, and I'm not going to because uh, I'm not going to go back and grab page, more pages. But Doc Ock. One of the more silly-looking villains absolutely looks like a total badass in this uh, in this comic book. All right, let's get back to some of the lameness. <laughs> As I mentioned, one of the underlying themes, the things that's talked about a lot, because uh, we have the new Kingpin of New York is actually Wilson Fisk's son. It, you you have to read. The Daredevil annual to understand where Mike Murdoch and the son that came from that I, I don't think existed before. Uh, he's the new kingpin. His dad's trying to use him or whatever. And he's like, you need to get reelected, you know, if, if I'm going to remain the kingpin. And then the other people are like, he needs to be reelected. And it turns out the Stromines, who we haven't seen in quite some time. That was a really, really good story arc within uh, Daredevil. Or these these ultra rich like billionaires that that are like the puppet masters. They actually scared the piss out of Wilson Fisk. It was really good stuff. They're like they think it's funny, and they're they're the ones apparently that uh, got Wilson Fisk elected in the first place. So it's all about Wilson Fisk needs to get reelected. Not that, that that doesn't make any sense because why would you get rid of all the superheroes and let your city be destroyed while they're all rotting in jail or in the negative zone? Um, you know because you have no heroes. To, <laughs> to, to protect your city if you want to get reelected, you know obviously you're going to get blamed for everything wilson fisk isn't that stupid but even dumber is uh apparently even dumber is that right even more dumb apparently is tony stark and his his idea as he's um as he's he's incognito in a lambo here is that he's going to run for mayor and oppose Wilson Fisk, and that way, that's what that's how they'll defeat him. This is just uh, this is lame. I have a feeling that this thing will get turned around because there's a really good speech by Luke Cage, Power Man, in this one that ends up. I think it's going to end up being Luke Cage, Power Man, ends up running for mayor, which I think will be a better direction. But this is just um, I don't know. It was like what one, what one, and it was lame. Uh, what's some other stuff? Because I'm about to get to this big last reveal. I need to, there's a couple more details I need to put out there. So Doc Ock, he goes down to the Baxter building and he's able to overcome the Fantastic Four, at least Reed and Sue. The thing escapes with the two Reed children along with Johnny, Johnny Storm. So he has that building. He's got like the gateway to the negative zone. He's got all this stuff. And that's where the purple man was being, was being held. And that gets us into the big uh, cliffhanger here. As we see the Sturbines, those are the people up top, and they, they at the beginning, they're like, should we keep up the game? And it turns out they're going to have him run for president. They're going to try and get him into the Oval Office, and that's their, uh, I don't know, it's their rich, rich rich people are evil. We know they're evil, Chip Zdarsky, but you're really driving it home here. They're so evil that they would put a, a scumbag like Wilson Fisk into the White House just for their own uh, amusement and pleasure. I guess to, to get their jollies off, but the, uh, the Kingpin himself, he's got the purple man that erased his memory 
And it, it, I guess at the end, it almost implies that he's going to cut it out of him or his abilities to mind control people. And he says, what a gift, what a squandered gift. Perhaps it's time someone more worthy possessed it for a better world. And he's uh, he's obviously hacking the crap out of him. That that is a uh, what is it? That's not that's not a uh, that's not ink there. You know what I mean? That's not some. He's not pounding out play doh. He's he's knifing the hell out of this purple dude. I guess to cut uh, his magic abilities out out of him. I don't know. Is he if he eats it? Will he now have mind control over people? I'm not really sure. That's the big uh, big reveal that the Strobines are just absolutely evil. They're controlling all of this, and they're going to put Wilson Fisk into the White House for shits and grins, of, I don't know, for their own amusement. Uh, does that work for you? I think it's kind of lame. Another part of the lameness that's part of this comic book. So that is my review of Devil's Raid number one of six. I think if you could check your mind at the door, there is a lot to enjoy about this comic book. First and foremost is the art, which is absolutely fantastic. When the superheroes are doing superhero stuff, they look badass because Marco Cicchetto, he knows how to pose superheroes when they're when they're using their powers to just make them look like a million bucks at every single on every single page, every single panel. Especially Luke Cage, I thought he really uh, really highlighted that character. He in obviously uh, Chip Zdarsky, the writer, I thought that was great. But the, the motivation's lame. It, I, I think you're you're selling the kingpin short here, and there needed to be an event that galvanized the people against the superheroes to go along with all this horse shit and this powers act that Wilson Fisk was enacting. I don't think they did that at all. I, <laughs> I think that was absolutely a complete failure, and they just jumped. They jumped right in the main event. They didn't. There's no foreplay. There's no getting us to this uh, this moment they could have made this happen and made it really work and be cohesive within the marvel comics universe but the marvel comics universe isn't cohesive is that chip Zdarsky's fault not really but you know i i, I can't give him credit uh, for 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 stuff he didn't have an opportunity to do but you know hey that's how things should be done and you know it, it's too bad this is what a lot of marvel comics events uh end up kind of being so i don't know I recommend it. The art's great. When they're doing action, it's a lot of fun. It's just, you can't think about it because <laughs> it's just all so flaccid and lame. It's like, ugh, why isn't this cooler? 